Hello, my name is Ali El Tahami. Uh, I am on group two and I will be presenting sliding window protocols. So in the previous protocols, which my group members reviewed, uh, data frames were transmitted only in one direction. So one way of achieving full duplex data transmission is to run two instances of one of the previous protocols, each using a separate link for simplex data traffic in different directions. Each link is then compromised of a forward channel for data and a reverse channel for acknowledgements. However, in both cases, the capacity of the reverse channel is almost entirely wasted. So a better idea is to use the same link for data in both directions. So how sliding, pro sliding window protocols work is when a data frame arrives, instead of immediately sending a separate control frame, the receiver restrains itself and waits until the network layer passes it to the next packet. In effect, the acknowledgement gets a free ride onto the next outgoing data frame. The technique of temporarily delaying outgoing acknowledgements so that they can be hooked on to the next outgoing data frame is known as piggybacking. Uh, so here's a little visual of how sliding window protocols work. So on the left side, you have the sender and the right side, you have the receiver. So if you start from zero, you can see the acknowledgement being sent and then it's piggying by, piggybacking off the data frame, which brings it down to here, uh, if my understanding is correct. And time um, also just helps keep track of the window. So the essence of all sliding window protocols is that at any instant of time, the sender maintains a set of sequence numbers corresponding to frames it is permitted to send. Uh, these frames are said to fall within the sending window. The receiver also maintains a receiving window corresponding to the set of, of frames it is permitted to accept. The sender's window and the receiver's window do not need to have the same lower and upper limits or even have the same size. In some protocols, they are fixed size, but in others, they can grow or shrink over the course of time as frames are sent and received. So although these protocols give the data link layer more freedom about the order in which it may send and receive frames, the requirement that the protocol must deliver packets to the destination network layer in the same order they're passed to the data link layer on the sending machine remains. And here is also another visual demonstration um, which shows the interaction between the sender and the receiver. Um, this is a sliding window of size one with a three bit sequence number. Um, Part A, that just shows the initial stage. B, that's after the first frame has been sent. C is after the first frame has been received. And D over here is after the first acknowledgement has been received. And uh, my question for the class will be, what is the technique which delays outgoing acknowledgements so that they can be hooked onto the next outgoing data frame? Thank you.